Lori and David Oriole of Naples, Florida have asked for a little help, so I'm off to see if I can lend a hand. The couple took on an extensive remodel themselves, though lately they're dedicating more time to their competitive show cats, including Telus Lars, a grand champion Abyssinian. But today, they're getting back in the do-it-yourself spirit and have invited me to help accent their beautiful home by installing a decorative wall niche. So this guy, you guys picked this out of a catalog? Yes, we did at our local uh, home improvement store. Okay, and then it was special, it was ordered it for was you? It was special order. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what's this made of? Lightweight, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a high-density polyurethane foam. Very pretty. It very is. It's nice. very attractive. Okay. I think it'll add a lot to that wall. This is where you're going to put it? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> can see one problem right now. You got, well, this is your uh, intercom right here. Right. What are you thinking about doing with that? Just taking it right out. We have an intercom in every other room and the door is right, right. there, so. So you won't miss that one. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to hold this up on the wall first. Okay. Let me actually so give you that pencil. Sure. I'm going to hold this up on the wall because I want you guys to get a sense of how high. Don't worry about centering it in the wall right now, but just height that you like. And I'll, I'm going to be the mover up or downer here, so you just tell me. I think it should, ooh, that's a little high. Okay. That looks good. Okay, you want to mark it, Steve? Yep. Right up on top there. All right. Yeah. Got it. After turning off the power at the circuit breaker, Steve and Lori's first job is to remove the intercom and light switch. They take off the faceplates, disconnect the wires, and pull the units out. Meanwhile, I locate and mark both the center point of the niche and the center point of the wall. So here's the center mark on the niche, right here. There's the center mark on the wall. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to put these two together, and that okay. automatically centers the niche in this. <laughs> these, are, these are the things you don't see on TV, right? <laughs> Good thing that's polyurethane foam. Did you see the way it bounced? Yeah. A ball. Well, inadvertently, I've made a point here. Polyurethane is far more durable than the plaster it's designed to mimic. With a better grip on things, we line up the center mark on the niche with the one on the wall. Then, while Steve and I hold it in place, Lori traces the outline onto the wall with a marking pen. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Sistine Chapel quality, I would say. Well, we've located our studs near this opening that we're about to cut. Here's one here, one here, and one here. And what we're looking at is sort of a, a road map of what's behind the wall board. We've got a couple of problems. The opening as we've originally drawn it kind of uh, falls right on top of this wall stud over here. And we've got this switch that we've got to deal with. This is a switch that's duplicated by another one on the inside of the bathroom. We're going to take this one out, but we're left with this opening right here. So our solution to clear this wall stud and to cover this box with the lip of our niche right here is to move everything to the right just about one inch. That'll be enough to accomplish what we want, but not so much that it appears to be off-center. Now, before we start cutting into the wall, we take a precautionary step. Steve uses a flashlight and compact mirror to take a peek inside through the intercom opening to make sure we're clear of any pipes, wires, or heating ducts. Over here in this bay between these two studs, we don't have an access port, so we're going to cut one. I cut the inspection port with a drywall saw. Then Steve confirms that we're clear to make the big cut. While Steve and Lori go to work with the drywall saws, I take a little time getting to know Telus Lars, the first grand champion Abyssinian I've ever met. Okay, all finished, huh? Yep. Okay, Lori, grab right here. Steve, get your hands in here. You just kind of wiggle it back and forth a couple times and pull it off. You sure this is what you want to do, Lori? Yep. Okay, pull it off. There you go. Oh, it came off in one piece. Beautiful. A small strip along the edge is still attached to a stud, so we remove it with a pry bar. Well, we're about to take on the most interesting part of this project, removing these sections of wall studs right here that are in our opening. Now, two things are important here. We want to make sure that this is not a load-bearing wall. What's a load-bearing wall? Well, that's a wall that uh, supports some weight from above, usually ceiling joists. We went up in the attic and determined this, in fact, was not a load-bearing wall. If you're going to take on a project like this, make sure that you do the same. And if you don't know, then that's the time to call in an expert and have them tell you. Secondly, I want to minimize the damage to the surrounding wall as I'm taking these out. 
So with that in mind, I've drawn some lines down here and cut some slots just about an inch and a half below our opening. And I'm going to insert this saw. This is called a reciprocating saw because the blade reciprocates back and forth. We're going to put it through this slot right here. And I'm going to cut off the bottom portion of this stud. Okay, Steve, want to give it a shot? Sure, love to. Okay, these are loose now, uh, but they are attached with screws that are coming through the drywall from the other side, right? Wall board. Uh, so we're going to uh, have to kind of pull these out. To get a better grip, Lori and I attach a couple of clamps to the stud, then rock it back and forth. Okay. Let's take the clamps off. Okay. Mm -hmm. And see if we can drop it down a little bit. There oh, we go. That came out easy. Stud number one. Now we need to frame out the top and bottom of our opening with short two by fours. This one at the top, called a header, is cut for a snug fit and attached to the cut ends of the studs with three inch screws. The bottom piece, called a sill, is attached the same way. Together, the header and the sill will secure and strengthen the cut ends of the studs. The only patching we'll need to do before installing our niche is to fill these cutting slots. Patient is before us. Yes. And we are gloved, ready to apply the adhesive. This is a um, polyurethane adhesive. The reason that you guys put the gloves on is if it gets in your hands, it does not come off. I apply the adhesive in a serpentine pattern along the lip and add a few dollops on the back. I think we're ready. Okay. Maybe we should have done a test fit first. Oh. Would have been a good idea. Oh, <laughs> man. Here we go. How are you doing over there? Pretty good. Pretty good, right? I make it. How long does it take for that glue to like adhere? Like glove. Uh, about 25 to 30 minutes. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. We could drive a couple small finish nails in here. But you know, this is fitting so well because you guys did such a perfect job of cutting. I think that's gonna be fine. Let's leave it just like that. Now, Lars, this is a niche fit for a championship cat if I ever saw one. You look magnificent up there. Just majestic. Oh, wait a mom. minute, you're not supposed to be Ooh, up there. I guess I guess you're gonna be replaced by a vase. Yes. Wow. So what do you guys think? Oh, I think it adds great character to a wall that was very hard to put anything on. Yeah, it was too short to really do, do much with. Absolutely, couldn't put another piece of furniture there. How was it for you doing it? I thought it was pretty easy. I was a little concerned what we would find when we cut into the wall, and we had the problem with the, the wall studs that uh, right. was easy to overcome in the end. So uh, it was easier than what I thought it was going to be. did a great job cutting those out, by the way. <laughs> Good, steady hand. Well, wall niches are pretty simple to install and come in a variety of styles and shapes. All said, they're a great way to add an elegant architectural element, or cat perch, to just about any room.